This time of the year usually brings families closer together, but that club will take a backseat today as intense cage ward resume on the hard court. It's older brother versus younger brother. One has totally embraced consistency while the other has yet to find it. They may carry the same surnames, but they wear completely different colors. Expect no holds barred, free for all, tough as nails basketball. It's Pumaren versus Pumaren. It's sibling rivalry Sunday on the Philippine Collegiate Championship Elite Eight. There can only be one. We are here at the Inares Sports Arena in beautiful Pasi City. Sweet 16 action. It's time for the Elite Eight. It's De La Salle University against the UE Red Warriors. How are you guys doing? Miguel Torres. And with me once again is Mr. Mike Abasolo. Mike, good to be working with you once uh, more. It's again a pleasure uh, to be with you again, Migo. And La Salle versus UE, both of these teams are no strangers in competitive basketball, Mike. Definitely, there are no stra uh, there are no strangers here. Save it for the, save it for the dinner table. There are no <laughs> family. Definitely, it's gonna be a rivalry between these two brothers. It's gonna be an exciting game, Miko. Walang kuya kuya pagdating sa basketball. And uh, when we talk about basketball, of course, the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Let's look at our standings for our brackets already. Kanina nakita niyo na nalo ang Ateneo de Manila University uh, against um, well the Mapua Cardinals. That means they move on this time. DLSU and UE would like to take care of things on their backcourt or Definitely. on their uh, backyard. Definitely. Uh, these, both, both of these teams, uh, when they win, will advance to the Elite Four. Yes. And will hopefully face with, uh, games between San Beda and Aureliano. Now, uh, we'll talk about that one later on. Ngayon, as a DLSU and UE tayo, both of these teams had different stories when it comes to the journey here to the Philippine Collegiate Championships. On your screen right now, you see the De La Salle University Green Archers. Rico Meyer Hoffer, a vital cog in that unit. And uh, let's talk about the story ng La Salle dito sa PCC. Actually, when they won over San Carlos, it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't a walk over the park. Uh, Hiram Bagatsing played beautifully there in that game, uh, uh, putting his shoes uh, within L.A. Revilla and... Um, Si, uh, Simon Atkins, Simon Atkins. Si Atkins. Simon Atkins. And uh, also he scored 11 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists. Do you think he'll be able to repeat this? Uh, that question will be answered all, uh, of course, later on as we go into the game. But right now, let's talk about the UE Red Warriors. Again, it wasn't a walk in the park. You see that they had a problem <laughs> with size in yes. this game. Elber Espirito had a great game with 13 points and 19 rebound, uh, rebounds. And of course, despite their 28% field goal shooting, they still won over a much taller UV Green Lancers team. And of course, it's different when you defeat a champion. Then itong Sesafi champions, eh, no? Definitely. Ang, uh, University of Visayas, they won. They were kind of the, the underdogs because uh, they were not automatically uh, put here in uh, the PCC. They had to fight their way through it. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the head-to-head -head matchups of La Salle and UE. Right, when you talk about the regular season, season 71, both of these teams split their uh, split their outings. UE defeated La Salle in the first round. With, of course, James Martinez carrying the shoes of the UE Red Warriors with 19 points. And of course, on the other side, when they when they defeated, uh, when La Salle defeated UE, JV Kasha had a great game. Let's uh, turn you over to courtside right now. This report from Rina Villamore. Yes, guys, this is one of the most sought-after intriguing game here in the Elite Eight. Now, as for the UE Red Warriors, they want to take advantage of this ball game, considering that the DLSU Green Archers have no point guards. And on the other hand, for the DLSU naman, they wanted to make use of JV Kasha, Rico Meyerhofer, and um, James Mangahas to form the cornerstone of their attack on both ends of the court. Now, for this two teams, they will ha just have to concentrate and to focus. The challenge here is to be mentally tough now. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina. And Mike, alamo, uh, not surprising uh, yung strategies and dalawang uh, team na ito. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of battles between La Salle and UE. And we'll talk about more of that when we return right here at the Philippine Collegiate Championship.
Guard number 14. <laughs> Welcome back to the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. Gil Torres alongside uh, Mike Abasolo and Rina Villamor for this game against La Salle and UE. The starters, Mike Walsham, Villanueva, Mangahas, Malabes, Casio for La Salle, Espiritu Noble, Paul Lee, Rafi Reyes, and James Martinez for the Red Warriors. It's time for both teams to go at it at each other. Elite 8 action here at the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Paul Lee against Bader Malabes. We know Lee is a potent scorer, but he misses that jump shot. Uh, would like, Paul, yes. yeah, Paul Lee would like to take this game wide open by hitting that jump shot, but it didn't work. Maraming salamat sa KFC and Smart for helping us with the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championship. BJ Walchuk almost fumbled. Casio, they're looking onto him for scoring. He stepped on the line. And it will go back to UE, another chance for the Red Warriors to draw first blood here in their Elite 8 matchup. A great play there by Rafi Reyes by speaking to the cudgels from JD Casio there. And that was a turnover for the Green Archers. Martinez misses the shot. Holly was there for the rebound. The fade. Yes, gets two points. This is one of the keys that the UE Red Warriors would like to stay in this ball game. They have to control the board. A little problem here for LaSalle. UE is employing uh, their own brand of the full court press. Now, if you're LaSalle, you know the full court press very well. How would you approach it? Well, actually, in the absence of Eli Revilla and Simon Atkins, the Green Archers are actually short-handed on the point guard position. Definitely, the, green, the UE Red Wars will take advantage of that, pressure the ball carrier, and hopefully, you know, as usual, try to create some turnovers. Are you expecting a whole lot of full court pressure here, Michael? Both of these I, two teams I would expect it. UE if my full court press at least 30 minutes of the time in this ball game. For LaSalle, would it be more of half court set up, or would they also get to the full court pressure uh, strategy? Well, well, sometimes they have in the again in the absence of uh, point guards in their uh, rotation. I guess they have to face themselves in this ball game. JB Casio now directing traffic for LaSalle. The Archers would like to go on to the next round, and so does UE. Watch him with the rebound, the hook. A little too strong. Yeah, yes. yes. Pangahas there was left wide open. I think uh, the UE Red Warriors almost forgot about the shooting arm of James Pangahas. <laughs> if you don't cover him, he will really burn you. As he's uh, looking to score a lot here in this ball game. I don't see James Mangahas because he's one of the more potent uh, shooters para dito kay Coach Frank Kumare. So far, we haven't seen Nico Mangahas in the ball game. Definitely, he will be the sixth man for the Green Archers. Espiritu being hounded by Walsham. Gets it over to Paul Lee. Lee. Malabes with a tap. He will go all the way to score this fast break and ties the ball game at two. Pero nakita mo yung UE, hindi na nag-aantay. Binalik na guys. Yeah, too much drifting there by Paul Lee. And that caused the turnover for the UE Red Warriors when Valer Malabes played the passing lane. Let's turn you over to Rina Villamore for this update. Yes guys, as you mentioned earlier, both teams here are no strangers to each other. And the only difference here will depend on the players, how these boys will be able to utilize their playing time. Expect the UE Red Warriors to pressure hard on JV being the only point guard for the TLSU team, they will have to force him to commit errors and make it hard for him to put a point for the TLSU. And more importantly, to increase their percentage on scoring. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina, for that update, Mike. Walang pina, walang uh, or rather nothing new. No sa strategy ni tong si Coach uh, Coach Dindo Kumaren. Yeah, he knows who to guard. Yep. You have to guard actually two people right now on the floor for the Green Archer, and that's James Mangas and JB Gacho. Paul Lee launches a two. He needed that because the time was winding down. Actually, the UE Red Warriors are having a hard time now trying to create some shots with the zone defense of the Green Archers. James Mangahas against Elmer Espiritu. Finds JB Casio. Oh! Finds Walsham down low and scores his uh, first two points of the game. Four points for LaSalle. 
huge points for UE. Actually, when, when the Green Archers were talking about the them being uh, short-handed in the point guard position, now the re- UE Red Warriors are really razor thin up front. Yes. Makikita nyo naman doon ang magandang tira ni Elmer Espiritu. Almost an off-balance shot. And they are also looking for PJ Walsham in this play. JB Castro over to Malabas. They want Walsham down low. Walsham uses his body to get two points. So far in that third touch by uh, PJ Walsham, he successfully converted on that one. If you're UE, you know you have to guard JB Castro. You know you have to guard James Mangahas. But how do you approach that uh, presence of PJ Walsham down low? So far, PJ Walsham is getting his way in the paint. Uh, what uh, John Noble should do is push him away from the shaded area. Castro still scoreless, but that's okay. They're not rushing him. He will get his points later on. If you all know JB Castro, Villan Nueva. Castro doesn't want to wait. He wants to score now, and he does well with his first two points of the game. That's a really a good view, a really great use of a screen from Maui Villanueva, and then a curl by JP Castro towards the basket. Elmer Espiritu goes over to Noble. Reyes. Elmer Espiritu. The double team is there. They know they have to guard Elmer Espiritu, and El- Espiritu having a hard time. Last touch, PJ Walsham. UE basketball. Yeah, as soon as Elmer Re- uh, Elmer Espiritu would touch the ball from underneath, they are trying to crowd him. Hopefully, that he would make a cross court pass, create a turnover. And the Green Archers are really cro- uh, clogging the lane, forcing the UE Red Warriors to shoot from the outside. Well, you know that's uh, also dangerous. Even uh, though they're trying to force UE to shoot from the outside, you know, you all know how. Uh, Sayang yung tira ni Reyes doon. We're talking about a while ago, no? Na yung kahit na ang uh, kahit na lasal, eh, alam na kailangan nilang bantayan yung labas. You still have to note that uh, there are a lot of shooters in this UE squad. You have James Martinez, yeah. a prolific scorer for UE if given the chance. Elmer Espiritu can hit from the outside. Pari Liagas could also hit from the outside. Yeah. I, the, I always observe this in point guards who are actually shooters at the same time they bring down the ball. It's hard to do a double duty inside the court. When you're a shooter, it's hard also to look for your shot because you're also playing, uh, looking for your teammates. Yeah. So you're actually busy, so your mind wanders. So uh, Rafi Reyes has been designated here as the shooter for the UE Red Warriors. The, the, the open the open shots would definitely come in as a bonus for James Martinez in this play. So it's James Martinez that uh, Coach Dindo Pumarin would like to have the point guard duties. Of course. Of course. Or either Rafi Reyes. But you know, when Rafi Reyes brings down the ball, definitely that would open up hopefully James Martinez. Maybe Casio. It's 8-5 early on here in the first quarter. Maui Villanueva hits a two-pointer. And you know what, Maui, Maui Villanueva was not able to score big in their last game. Do you think he will have uh, a more a more potent role in offense here? Yeah, I guess. When Maui Villanueva delivers, definitely that's a plus sign for the Green Archers with their offense. And a good defensive stop there by Maui Villanueva hopping the shot of Elmer Espiritu. Stepping on the line, tinawag ng referee natin against Pader Malapes. Pader Malapes, uh, no presence of mind there on the line. <laughs> so, again, um, UV having problems on with size. And we've witnessed that uh, that disability of theirs in their game against the Green Lancers. Nakita natin, uh, Rafi Reyes being hounded, uh, being, uh, giving, uh, or rather, TV Kato giving Rafi Reyes problems here. It's because of his experience. Do you think that he should uh, try to make James Martinez bring the ball down? Well, actually, they're making now James Martinez the shooter. And Rafi Reyes as the point guard. So that makes him an off-the-ball player now in their rotation. Zamar had to put up a shot because time was winding down in their shot clock. Hindi pumasok. That means Bob will go back to DLSU. Time out called on the floor. 10 to 5. LaSalle is uh, in the lead. Inaantay natin ano kung timeout nga yung tinawag o officials timeout. 
alam mo pag-usapan natin ng konti ano ang uh, ang game na ito as we see now Hiram Bagatsing about to enter the ball game for coach uh, for coach Franz Pumarin I guess it will be just be an official timeout. Let's talk more about yung pagharap ng dalawang teams na ito throughout the years. Mm-hmm. We've seen different lineup changes. We've seen different uh, strategies employed by both of these coaches. Do you still think that there's still supposed to be an adjustment period for both these teams? Well, both of these teams know each other very well. I think there will be less adjustments. And, and supposedly, the, the UE Red Warriors are... Uh, well, I can, I can say they're really short-handed right now. Uh, well, as opposed to the Green Archers, uh, the, the limited practice toys. time are playing, are taking its toll on both teams. So, so far, there is no clear advantage or disadvantage now when it comes to this tournament. Halos patas lang. Halos patas lang. Dito, ano? But you know, whether you play for Coach Dito Kamaran or whether you play for Coach Frank Kamaran, definitely both coaches would demand discipline. Both teams are disciplined. Both teams play the right way. Uh, both teams look for the open man when I say playing the right way. And you know, both of these brothers know their basketball very well. Let's look at the field goals. Uh, field, field goal story here in the first quarter. 5 to 9 for DLSU, 2 of 13 for UE. Malaki laki ang uh, disparity somehow ng ating field goal percentage. As we give you the KFC delivery assist of the quarter. Bader Malabes handing it down to EJ Walsham using his size to drop those two points. You know, both of, the, both of these coaches gagamitin tong oras na to para mag-regroup. Of course. And uh, what do you think are these two coaches talking about? What do you see uh, here early in the first quarter? Should both of these two teams improve on? Definitely with the UE Red Warriors. Uh, since the De La Salle Green Yarders are clogging the lane, I think Coach uh, Dean Dupumarin would look for more cuts on the inside. I think he would tell his players to go, to go inside and headhunt, look for the open man. As for the Green Archers, I, I think with their speedy lineup of Ferdinand, uh, Casio, and Bagatin, I think they would play more of a up-tempo game. Plus, on the defensive end, they would probably pressure more the ball for the UN Red Warriors. As you see the proud dad of the Pumarins, Coach Pilo. Nanonood, sino kaya ang sino kaya ang kanyang chinichir dito? Well, siguro naman unbiased. Actually, the rule is one, the mom Mom would probably go for the uh, yes. and the dad would probably go for the red warriors. So we don't so know the current arrangement now. <laughs> equal split, ano? Yep, equal nga. split. Hiram Bakatsing trying to get things going for the De La Salle Green Archers here in the first quarter. Alam mo, yung mga timeouts na gano'n, ano? Sigurado, kahit ang ano yung mga lalabi yung mga paan ng mga players, how do you keep yourself warm? Oh, nice pass by Casio, blocked by Espiritu. It will go to the side of UE, pero pinag-usapan natin, how do you keep your legs warm after a long stretch like that? As you can see, it has no effect. Bale <laughs> <laughs> wala lang. Bale wala lang. It's actually, we're looking now at a speedier lineup of the Green Archer. See, they're hunting the ball. Uh, they're really pressuring the ball right now. So, this is really a speedy lineup and the Green Archers would look definitely on their trans- transition offense. Now, alam naman natin na walang madaling assignment dito sa Elite 8 and I'm sure that this game would not be the same as their first two games. Definitely. Both because the yeah, both these, both of them really are scouted well. They know each other pretty well. Matagal na magkasama yung dalawang coaches na yan. Sigurado, sigurado ako. Well, who knows? They also share some notes. Pero alam mo, there's always a difference. You know? Even yeah. how slight it, it will be with the style of play of both of these squads. But definitely, both coaches are very demanding. Both are disciplined coaches. Both are very cerebral coaches. That's what I can tell you right now, Migo. I've attended some practices of the unit Warriors and I, I, I tell you that the players really work hard for those players. And I've attended some of the practices of the Green Archers. Also, Coach Marin demands so much from his players. And when you talk about both of these coaches, we're talking about the cerebral battle. It's a lot of cyber that's happening here. It's not a lot of cyber. So far, so good. Practically, uh, both teams are evenly matched. So, to think that both teams have no surprise.
surprises at all. Oh, oh. to give you. Ilang beses na nagharap itong dalawang po. Oh, nice pass by Meyerhofer to Ferdinand. But Ferdinand fumbling that shot. Actually, Rico Meyerhofer got a good look there over Ferdinand. But that's why he was able to make that pass. Oh, Elmer and Spear for uh, Manny uh, Liagas. Not minding the defense of Meyerhofer and Ferdinand getting the two points. That's what Manny Liagas should do in this ballgame. is to assert himself from inside. Because he's one of the big men, that reliable big men that the UE Warriors have right now. Ferdinand! This is the pass, but uh, Rico Meyerhofer is yeah. for two points. And the offensive rebounding end, they have to put a body on Rico Meyerhofer if they want to stay in this ballgame. But there, Malabes Malay. goes all the way! Coach Dindo Pumaren wants to talk things over with his boys. We call a timeout, 14 to 7. We'll be right back. back to the Philippine Collegiate Championship. This is the Elite 8 as you look at that fast break by Bader Malabes. Deserves another look. You know, LaSalle and UE, these two teams, defensive-oriented teams, prolific scorers on both sides. Someone, uh, one team has to give definitely here. Definitely. <laughs> when, when, you see, when you see the Green Archers right now, what they have on the floor, then don't be deceived when you see uh, Hiram Bagatsing on the floor. This is a very tall lineup. When you have Meyerhofer, Ferdinand up front, and their wingman as Jason Webb right now, this is actually a tall team for the Green Archers. I just want to wait for Yeah. Hiram Bagatsing and Joshua Webb, the new inserts the lineup of Coach Franz Kumaren. UE has only one field goal in the last five minutes, Mike. Why do you think that's happening? Uh, well, actually, uh, they have some good open looks. They weren't just able to execute well. With the, actually, the green archers are just clogging the lane inside. Well, the archers definitely have to respect uh, that this will be a tough game for them. It's a walk in the park with the Nagaris and Carlos. PG Peru will let one fly, not making it. So far, as you can see, the intensity is very different. When they played both against the two Visayan teams that yes. were here oh. last week, the, their intensity was different. As you can see, their shoulders are really up. And then, nakikita mo yung digil, higa ka. Marilag is taking that shot. Oh, full court press by UE. Good recognition there by the UE Red Warriors when Jason Webb got the ball. A weaker player, and that that easy for them to press. Another timeout called 14 to 9. LaSalle up by 5. We'll be back. In Pasig, the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. We're inching our way closer and closer to the national final. There can only be one champion, and it will be disputed here at the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championships. Miguel Torres, along with Mike Abasolo and Rita Villamore. Lasalle against UE. Meyerhofer with a rebound. Body's banging inside. He gets a second chance and he doesn't disappoint. Again, they're not putting a body actually or challenging Rico Meyerhofer in that thing. Mingana is in the ball game as well as, Tagar, uh, as, well as Tagada. Marilyaga. The pick against Ferdinand. Meyerhofer clearing the board for Lasalle. Ayan ang pagkatsing. Over to Ferdinand. You know what? Ferdinand has been the receipt of a lot of classes. He didn't have to pass up yung... Uh, why do you think is that happening? Well, well, uh, well actually, uh, once the Green Archers uh, get the defensive rebound, that ignites their transition offense. 
actually, it's actually a bonus for everybody who run the floor for them on the offensive end to, re- to have the recipient uh, to be the recipient of the ball. So, kahit sino dyan, okay lang yun. As soon as they get the talagang defensive rebound. Talagang kailangan lang talaga ma-convert yung kanyang uh, mga shots. Mm-hmm. For din na, but you know, the UE Red Warriors are really challenging the shots yes. of the Red Warriors. Ah, the, the Green Archers. Oh. Talk, about the, talk about the Green Archers. Talk about this guy, Jamie Cashel, on the bench right now. With the, well, just two points under his name. So far, the Green Archers are doing, on the, are doing a good job offensively in spite of Jamie Cashel sitting on the bench. This, uh, I think it's the biggest lead already for Lasal. Four seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Elmer is really cool. Lasal up by nine, 18 to nine. When we come back, second quarter action, Philippine Collegiate Championships. Sports Arena, the 2008 Philippine Flying V Phil, uh, Philippine Collegiate Championships. The De La Salle University Green Archers going up against the University of the East Red Warriors. We're about to start the second quarter of action in this Elite Eight matchup. You can expect that this will be a good one because both of these teams would like to prove their worth and move on to the next round to face either San Beda or Arellano. As you can see, James Martinez and Poldi are back in the lineup for the UAE Red Warriors to add stability, at least in the backcourt. Well, we know Poldi is a, is a good scorer. He's one of their scorers, actually one of their leading scorers, you know, Poldi. And not to mention, he's also a lockdown defender. Yes. Hindi mo napapansin masyado, you know, that's a second set of offense ni Poldi. Minsan nakakalimutan mo na magaling yung defense ito. PJ Barua gets the floor to go as the turn court side to Rita Villamor. Yes, the Rui Red Warriors get the floor to give an inch to the Green Archers in this ball game. They wanted to win this game and wanted to extend the series. Now they have to keep the game. They have wanted to keep the game close. They will have to continue on contesting all the shots of their opponent team and make sure that they tighten on the floor. Coach Rito even told them that they need to pressure more. They will have to compensate with the Adesi who's fast break and share the ball even more with their teammates. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina. Actually, the main point there is tighten the floor. Yeah, if they want to get back in this ball game and enjoy their pressure defense, they have to tighten the floor and make the Green Archers work hard on offense. James Martinez, back-to-back, three-point shot. So far, they are gambling on uh, not uh, yeah, making James Martinez shoot the ball. Mas nagko-concentrate sila sa loob instead of trying to guard the shooters of UE. That's why they've been making those three points on. Yep. Marua. Let's see if he can do it three in a row. Yes, he does. Again, bonus point for some of the players in the Green Archers. Yung uh, mga recipients ng mga ganong pasa. No? Or being uh, alert and consistent in running the floor. Yep, that makes life easy for Rico Meyerhofer and the rest of the starters of the Green Archers to get their game going at least if they're not scoring at least their teammates are helping them on offense three second violation call against UE and if you're coach Nubomaran you never want to see that because that means you're not alert and your mind is not as present as you should yeah, and you're not executing well on offense I don't look at Jake. oh tap by James Martinez it's fast break time but Joshua Webb was there he had no choice but to go up and try to contest that shot yep. again, by uh, Flores. Again, the disability factor for the Green Archers right oh. now is a point guard position. Now a veteran, now a veteran player, now yes. like James Martinez, can up to steal the ball. Turnover story: UE slightly uh, behind. You know, that's a turnover story, natin. But you can't notice them. Huh? Yes, uh, because they're in the lead. Uh, and the Green Archers are in the lead. Yeah. You just uh, noticed that parang, there's a few disparity of points oh, there in the turnover department. 
The second free throw was not good. PLSU has to set once more. There's a double team. Meyer Hopper. Oh, nice pass over to Ferdinand, but fumbles it once more. Ferdinand this time makes sure that the two points is at the back. Uh, Ferdinand there may be the shot at the first try, but in the second, he made sure that he gets the basket. Thank you very much, KFC and Smart, for helping us with the 2008 PCC. This, this is a matchup that we're trying to look for right now. It's Pirito versus Rico Meyer offer. El pareho yung mga lean, yeah, quick, lean. agile. Yep. Hostile, Athletic. mobile, agile players. Pareho yan. May ilig dumaktak yung dalawang yan. <laughs> High flyers, long, prototype wingmen for both teams. Alam mo, both of these uh, players were talking about Meyer Hofer and Elmer Espiritu. Their brand of play is, uh, well, we can compare them uh, both as almost identical. Dahil mahilig kumalo, mahilig sa defense, mahilig kumakta. Yeah, could that be because of the influence Same of the Same range when it comes to shooting. Yes. Could so practically both are identical. Oh. Meyerhofer, oi! <laughs> Medyo na si Rico. Yeah, eagerness. Eagerness lang naman uh, and with regards to Meyerhofer's uh, move there towards the basket. Maganda sana yung idea ni Rico Meyerhofer. He saw an opening inside. Yeah, intention was good. Pero yun nga lang, natawagan ng foul. Traveling, traveling call. Ah, o nga pala, sorry. Traveling call. Paul Lee has yet to score much here for UE. I think they have a mismatch, mismatch here with Paul Lee and Joshua Webb. I guess he, Paul Lee miss. recognized the mismatch there, so he went at uh, Joshua Webb. Foul called on the floor. Paul for his first personal foul. Paul Lee in the ball, on the free throw line. Substitutions for coach Franz Kumar and Walsham coming back in for beef. And also Casho for more scoring. But it's an 11 point lead, 6.43 remaining. Now it's actually, this is more size for the Green Archers right now with Walshaw, Meyerhofer, and PJ Barua playing the wing position. This is actually again another top line up for the Green Archers. And Joshua Webb, I know, you know, a lot of people in the LaSalle community call him Psycho D. Psycho D. <laughs> Psycho D, for a good reason. This guy is relentless on defense. So we're also looking to him. You know, he's not just a guard. He can also play the forward position. Yeah, the wing, the wing position. And I think here in this set it will be Webb and Casso will be doing guard duty for uh, oh backward violation. Webb thought not, that he had guys. Uh, actually, the presence of presence of mind just there, not there for uh, Joshua Webb. Actually, offensive pass diagonal he throws oh, the midcourt line. No, all you need to do is look at the circle and you have it. Over the Elmer Espiritu, we can hit it from that range. And he makes two points. A dribble handoff and a slip there off a body screen made that possible with an opening shot from Elmer Espiritu. You know what? Kapag pansin-pansin na nahihirapan talaga magkapa ng bola ng Lasal. They don't have a point guard to, uh, to, to, to bring the ball down as comfortably as they used to be doing before. Again, we were talking about the absence of, of a point guard, but after this timeout, we'll discuss it later. Tignan natin kung anong mangyayari. That's a long whistle. Yes. <laughs> I think it's another official timeout as we are experiencing technical difficulties here at the, the Inara Sports Arena. But you know, 26-18, this game is, well, still close. Yeah, it's what still does, very close. What does UE have to do to get back? Yeah, well, they have to take care of the basketball. Don't don't let the numbers of the turnovers uh, deceive you. Just take care of the basketball and execute well. Exploit some of the mismatches that you have right now against the Green Archers, especially when you have Paul Lee on the floor, especially when you don't have a point guard, try to pressure the ball. Uh, JV Casio is now playing the pseudo, what I call the pseudo point guard now for the Green Archers. And that's taking away his uh, offensive side of the ball game. We'll be right back with more action here and we'll talk more about the uh, differences and uh, kailangan pa nilang gawin when we return here at the PCC. Lasalle in the lead. UE 
not far behind. Uh, so we check our table officials, see if they're already in a goal. Alam mo, may kanina pinag-uusapan natin yung mga imperatives para dito sa dalawang kukunan natin. UE and Lasalle. Well, yeah. We talked about the UE Red Warriors adjusting what they should do if they want to catch up with the Green Archers. Now, let's talk about the Green Archers and what they should do. They should assert themselves on the inside. And we know that the Red Warriors right now are short-handed at the front line. Rico Meyer Hoffer. We know he can make moves at the post. Ang ganda naman ng kanyang fake. Elmer Espiritu called for the foul. At yan, uh, yan ang gusto ni Coach, uh, ni Coach Franz Pumarin giving it down low to Rico Meyerhofer. Actually, either PJ Walsham or Rico Meyerhofer in the shaded area. As long as the bigs of the De La Salle Green Archers would get some more touches, that's definitely going to be good for De La Salle. Meyer Hopper and first free throw missed it. You know what? Uh, for for a scorer like Rico Meyer Hopper, who has a decent jump shot, he's been having problems at the free throw line. Actually, in one game in, during the U UAAP season seventy one, uh, we've seen him. He did, did not convert any free throws. Yes, that's one game. So, do you think that uh, UE can capitalize with that advantage? Oh! Get that ball out of here, says Rico Meyer Hopper Malabes. Maybe catch so Rico Meyer Hopper wide open from three. He can hit that shot. He's been practicing. Well, yeah, he was wide open then for that shot. So he had the green light to take it. Malabes against James Martinez. Parillagas now. Elmer Espirito. Another jump shot for him. Short. Only was there. Blocked was more by Rico Meyer Hopper. Actually, that's the shot that you don't want uh, Elmer Espirito to take. Especially away from the shaded area. I think uh, what Coach Rico Meyer would want is for him to take it strong inside. It's time for the Green Archers to talk things over. We'll be right back. at the beautiful women here at the Inara Sports Arena. Isn't that Sharon Yu? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon Yu, not a stranger to DLSU basketball. Mm -hmm. He is at now a fan right here, oh. right now at the Inara Sports Center. As a matter of fact, we can say that she has uh, no, he, she probably knows the place by her too. Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Inbound to the ball well for UE. And a lot of pass. Martinez tried it to uh, Elmer Espiritu. Again, okay, shortcuts. Yeah. Shortcuts. There are actually no shortcuts in basketball. Again, if you if you recognize that, that your opponent is playing down, you might as well move the ball from side to side and look for the first open man. Rebound story here in the second quarter. Six rebounds for Lazal, only three by UE. Again, again, yeah, again, the short-handed, the, the razor-thin front line of the UE Red Warriors here is showing, as you can see from the rebounding chart, 6-3. to three. That's uh, practically a 50% disparity. Oh. <laughs> At magbabago pa mismo ulit ang itsura ng rebounding story. That's the end of the to have to go out to be taken care of. Na, na puwing ata, or na, actually, na sa mata. Yeah, yeah, to get them some rest and actually to look at that eye. Rico Meyerhofer recognizing his advantage attack the lane right away mm -hmm. that's the thing that he should do right now as soon as they have to exploit right here right now the size disadvantage of the United Warriors if they want to keep that lead that 9 point lead they have to attack the last game Rico Meyerhofer 5 points 5 rebounds make that 6 points for him and uh, maganda nilalaro ni Mike Hoff for her here early in the second quarter. Or rather, here early in the game. He was below the radar during the UB Green Dancers game. Yes. Now he is asserting his uh, veteranship in this ball oh. game against the Red Warriors. Alam mo naman mga team leaders, you know, when it's time for them to step up, they will definitely do everything so that their team That's right. will have a chance. James Martinez. Over the, the Red Warriors. Warriors, yeah, the Red Warriors are trying to break down the zone of the Green Archers with a triple penetration and then kick out. Okay, 
Reyes making two points. 8 point lead for the South, 28 to 20, with only 4 29 remaining here. In the first half, Bader Malapes. Pasado Malakas and Riva. Meyer Humper was there for the rebound. Foul ball again. Soriano. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, that was. Uh, oh, wait. Yes, John Noble. John Noble called for his foul. I guess the U11 Warriors have to do better than that when they when they go for the rebound. I see that James Martinez was just looking up and not boxing out anybody. So I guess if they want to clear the board, they have to put a money on everyone and communicate. They want to get the ball. But there Malavis, quick release, didn't go in. James Martinez, John, over the ball lead. Reyes. Martinez shoots the ball. Yes! Martinez. Yeah, you can't keep James Martinez open like that. And telling Bader Malabes, this is how you shoot a three-pointer. Bumagsak pa eh. Kansya naman ang tira ni James Martinez. Walsh up underneath. Too strong pa. Has it there. Malakas din. Yeah, one of the rare, one of the few occasions that the Green Archers are open underneath. Foul ball against Maui Villanueva. Caught, uh, caught holding Harry Lagas. Holding cool and Vito, holding cool and Tohon. Let me see. Let me put some advantage of him. Maui Villanueva recognizing his mistake. Elmer Spirito inserted by Coach Dindo Mumaran back in the ballgame dahil uh, nakikita nga naman nahirap sila sa ilalim. Yep. So far, James Martinez has been producing. And this is good news actually for the Red Warriors when James Martinez is uh, on with his uh, three-point shooting. Reyes over the ball lead. It's his turn to take a three. Too strong. Martinez was there for the offensive board. Um, he sets it. Matthew Reyes, another three. Yes! Again, bonus shot from the three-point area. The Red Warriors back in the game. Timeout call by Coach Brent Pumarin. Let's take a timeout. We'll be right back. Now for our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. KFC is finger licking good. Call 8878888. Yan naman ang tirang yun. James Martinez. Bumagsak pa. 28 to 26. And UE back in this game finally was able to breathe life into their offense with just 3 minutes and 24 seconds remaining here in the first half glad for you to join us Miguel Torres along with Mr. Mike Abasolo and Rina Villamor for this game between La Salle and UE Barua and Bagatching are back into the ball game for more control well, we all, yeah, we all know that when the three-point shooting of the UE Red Warriors is on, this is a very dangerous team. So that means uh, you'll be spreading out to your front line too freely. As you can see, four out of five UE. For this Zero, quarter four alone, five. three of four. And James Martinez is the culprit for the walls of the Green Artists right now from the three-point area. Reyes missed the shot. Kasha was there for the rebound. But a team against Paul Lee. Paul Lee using his veteran experience. At that, time, Raffi, at that time, Rafael Reyes had no numbers. He was just too eager to convert inside the ball game of 20 balls. De La Salle not being able to convert anywhere from three for territory again. And then with the Barua and Picasso. Supervisor offense. And Bagatik on the line now for two free throws because of the penalty situation that UE is in. Franz Pumaren. Giving instructions to his two shooters, Bagat Singh makes his first. Mike, you in a bubuhay and a top count, you know. But, um, you know, they've been shooting well. But then, when it comes to the big men, hirap pa rin sila. Yeah, 
so far, when when you don't have any good looks from underneath, sometimes when you heat up from the three-point area, you feel good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> iba yung pakiramdam na nagsisimula nang mag-click yung offense eh. Yep. Because remember, uh, big men who score from the paint, that's only two points. You know, when shooters score from the three-point area, wow. Well, you got a three. Yeah, that's a good one. It's me to to pass it over to Zamar. Zamar foul called against would it be against Casho or Mangahas? It will be against JB Casho. Now, this is a very tough cover for the Green Archers when you got Zamar, Martinez and Rafi Reyes at the same time yeah, at the same time on the floor and then it's hard to rotate for the for your for your defense. Reyes drive kicks it over to James Martinez one more time for James Martinez. Four out of five here in the second quarter. Only in the second quarter for James Martinez. And he is actually on fire. And with that, UE ties the game at 29. 215 remaining here in the second quarter. Barua, Binawi Yungtina, gives them back the lead. You can't take DJ Barua for granted. He's on the floor there for one good reason. To shoot the ball. Uh-huh. And do some extra work on the oh. offensive and of course on the defensive end. Espiritu gives it over to Samar. The screen. They, they find Elmer Espiritu. The fake. Espiritu loses the handle. And JV Casho trying to capitalize on their offensive set. The crossover. Oh, nice pass over to Bakache. Oh. Wow, how did JV Casho would work? <laughs> he converts not only for himself and also for his teammates. He's never going pass alone with JV Casho. Foul called away from the ball. PJ Walsh of the guilty one. That was an excellent pass by JV Casho. I think this will be it. Oh, I'm tired now. This is going to be replay. Maganda. Ayan nun ito. As if you needed any more convincing that that was a good pass. Yep, that was an unselfish play by uh, JP Casho, creating not only for himself, but, but also, also from his team. teammates. Oh, In Pagatsing. other words, maganda yung pakikisama talaga nila. Oh, oh. Pagatsing not disappointing, getting those two points. Penalty for both teams. Dino Etronic. Seven games in the season due to injuries. Mm-hmm. Itong si uh, Etrone, but I'm sure that he's raring to show that he belongs here in this team. Yep, giving some of the big, big of the United Warriors some rest with one minute and 30 seconds left in the ball game. At least a filler in at the big man position for the UE Red Warriors. Full court press again by UE. BJ Barua has it. This is a great time to invite the full court press yes. by the UE Red Warriors. When time is running down, there is actually nothing to lose for your guys on the floor. Oh! The layup by Makating didn't go in. Espiritu now. Zamar on the fast break. Yes! One point lead by DLSU. Just one minute, three seconds remaining. James Mangahan over to BJ Barua. Decides to shoot. Yes! Of course, both teams want once close the half on a strong note. James Martinez is hit he's hit four out of five here in the second quarter. Will it be five out of six? Elmer Espiritu against Rico Meyerhofer foul away from the ball. Referees count the shot and a foul called against James Mangahas away from the ball and if it was not Malin, you don't want that to 38 points in the second remaining. Rico Marhofer, they're offered only token resistance yes. to that jump shot made by Elmer Espiritu. I think he forgot to put his hand up on that play or he was just waiting for Elmer Espiritu to go for it at the shaded area. Nagulat din kaya si uh, Rico but you know, I'm then sure. again, then yes, again that's like oh. wide open when he made that jump. <laughs> it's our fourth deadlock of the game. 36 all. James Mangahan against Elmer Espiritu. Espiritu, we all know him as a good defensive man. Mangahan crossing the eighth second line. Actually, yeah, actually, the first one to blink defensively in this ball game will win it. But oh, a shot. It's not good. Meyerhofer running. Tried to tap it out of Entrones' foot. But then Entrones had the presence of mind to stay away. Zamar all the way was four. 
that's what you don't do when you're uh, playing your when you're at your front of not giving any straight line for any of your opponents towards the basket. Once again, Lippemeyer Hopper finds the open man inside to tie the ball game. Meyer Hopper gives it to Barua and we're tied at 38. We're back to square one at the end of the first half. De La Salle versus UE, our fifth deadlock of the ball game. Alam mo, Mike, pareho ko po na na ito, no? Nagsimula ito, ma- uh, medyo malamig ng konting, eh. Nag-iinit na. Yeah, probably the, the lack of practice time kept them cold. Yes. And so far, it's now the second quarter. It's now the end of the first half. These guys have heated up. And so far, they're playing. Both of these teams are playing excellent basketball in spite of their turnovers. And, and yes. the UE Red Warriors are actually shooting well from the three-point area. And that's uh, so far was uh, a story for the Red Warriors to catch up against the Green Archers. You know, both of these two teams, you know, have, they have they have uh, players that are not playing on their part right now. They have their own handicap. Sika nga, mm-hmm. uh, Lasal is playing without point guards. UE playing without big men, mm-hmm. limited big men at that. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're pretty much compensating and they're thriving. Yeah, uh, in spite of their disadvantages, so far both teams are not so struggling, but at the same time they're adapting. Let's turn you over to Rina Villamore for this court side update. Yes, I have with me assistant coach Tyron Bautista. Coach, how will you try to compensate on the second half with with the absence of two of your point guards? Uh, Hiram Bagaching would have to step up his game, especially now that uh, Eli is uh, injured. So he, he will be the one to play the point guard position. Uh, ah. Yes, just to step up. Uh, the same thing with Jamie Casio also. What about the other adjustments that your team needs to work on in the second half? Uh, for us, I think we just need to move the ball around more. Uh, we keep on dribbling the ball. That's why you is able to set up their defense. But if you just keep on pushing the ball and look for the open one, I think we'll be okay in the second half. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina, for that update with Coach Tyrone Bautista. When we come back, we'll break this game at the half. It's tied. 38 all Philippines Asian Championship. Two quarters of action were tied at 38. This is the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. Hope you guys are enjoying your time. Miguel Torres along with Mike Abasolo to break this game down at the half. And Mike, how did you see the first half play out? So far, family ties will be left at the dinner table, Migo. As you can see, <laughs> the reason why the UE Red Warriors are afloat right now is because of James Martinez. He's been really shooting well from the three-point area. And of course, let's not forget the efforts of the DLSU Green Archers. They are really rebounding the ball well. They are actually taking the ball inside with a, with a 54 to 38 disparity from the uh, two-point area. So that's so far dead even for both teams. Our halftime stats, Mike. What do you think should uh, both of these teams look into? Well, so far, both teams are actually taking advantage of all of all their disadvantages yes. right now. Uh, uh, the Red Warriors are pressuring the ball with the, uh, with the absence of a legitimate point guard right now for the Green Archers. They're actually applying more pressure now than ever before. Like for the UE Red Warriors, how, uh, for the Green Archers, however, what they should do is actually take advantage of the razor-thin edge of the Red Warriors from the inside. Our leading scorers in the game, Barua Meyerhofer, Ferdinand for LaSalle, for UE, the Red Warriors have Martinez, Espiritu, and Reyes. You know, we were talking about uh, both of these two teams, you know, they're, they're the difference with their style of play, the guys that are lacking, as you see that shot by PJ Barua. In the second half, do you still see them trying to exploit all of these disadvantages by the other team, or do you think they employ a different strategy? I'm sure, uh, definitely. If you're if you're the Pomaran brothers, definitely they will exploit every mismatch that they that they can take. 
But the one thing is constant for both these teams. Both of these teams will definitely pressure the ball and play good defense throughout the, the ball game. Alam mo, nakita natin kanina yung halftime stats natin. Pretty much even except for three-point field goal made. Yeah. One out of nine para sa DLS and Green Archer for UE. As you can do, five out of 14. And then whoever tries to open things in the second quarter, in the third quarter, they go in, mga ha. Still nothing. Liaga says enough is enough. It's time for us to set this one up. Actually, the UE Red Warriors are trying to block the lane to take away again the inside presence of the Green Archers. Yagas over to James Martinez, they hit five in the second quarter. Paul Lee, hobbled by J.B. Casio. I think that's what uh, Paul Lee should do right now, to challenge the interior defense of the Green Archers. Nine, Especially P.J. Walsham, who's clogging the paint. And probably, who knows, he could get right now. He's out of the free throw area. Paul Lee. Well, in this game, the Warriors are looking on him to score. He misses the first shot. We're still dead tied, dead even at 38. Just a few seconds has elapsed here in the third quarter. 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championship. Small Lee makes good of his second free throw. 39-38 UE. Again, there's going to be a lot of effort now for J.B. Kasha to bring down the ball and actually take some offensive uh, production for the Green Archers. Yagas bumps into Maui Villian with an open ball. Reyes. Yagas again runs into a wall named P.J. Walsh. Martinez. They have to Seven take the shot right now. Yes. Oh, he makes it again! James Martinez! We've been talking about our season 71 split. Uh, James Martinez buried the green, uh, uh, the green archers there when they won the game. Foul called against Barry Liagas off a of fake by BJ Walsh. But talk about James Martinez. Six out of seven from three-point territory. <laughs> James Martinez is certainly on fire right now. Let's turn you over courtside. Rena Villamore has this update. Yes, the Green Archers can't be can't afford to be playing too lax or easy going coach Francis Man is so disappointed earlier in the dugout. Yes, they were having a hard time creating in the inside. Hence they were told not to hesitate to score from the outside. If they do this, baka mas malamangan pa nila dito ang UE team. They were also told not to get frustrated, but instead to focus on how to outsmart this smaller squad and to always pass back on defense, move the ball faster, and always stay in front of their man. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina, for that update. And my, you know, when, when you have Paul Lee inside the floor, you it, the Red Warriors will surely play the passing lanes. And in that play, Paul Lee was able to make the steal and almost a conversion in their possession. David Castro has the point guard to the absence of Simon Atkins and L.A. Revilla. Bagel Malabes over the game Mga Haas. Mga Haas to the side. Walsham was not able to complete the pass. Three players clogging the lane for the Green Archers. Martinez going all the way. Misses it. Mga Haas was there for the rebound. Jamie Casho wants more. Casho. White PJ Barua fakes. Having a hard time trying to rotate the ball. But their Malabes open for three point territory. Hits that one all the way from South Avenue. There, Tyrus and DC a Green Archer open from the three point area, and that was Barrer Malabes taking over. Malabes finally getting that basket. Mariliagas, the steal by JB Castle. It's the Archer's turn to press. The Warriors on defense, Malabes, the floater not there, Barua was trying to tap it, gets it back, turn around, it's good. Well, the Green Archers had numbers then, good thing P.J. Barua had the presence of mind to get the offensive rebound. P.J. Barua now with 15 points in the game, Martinez sets it up for the UE Red Warriors. Paul Lee against Bader Malabes, it's Mangahas against Espiritu, Pariliagas decides to take a three short, Lee was there for the rebound, and Bader Malabes caught with his pants down. Yeah, so far Paul Lee was able to slip the defense and get a second chance point, almost a second chance point for the Red Warriors. Paul Lee will have to settle for two free throws. And the lead is still with DLSU with 7.03 remaining here in the third quarter. 
Paul Lee has been getting most of his uh, points off the free throw line, Mike. So far, so good. He's been attacking the basket. He's not been able to convert. But what he's trying to do is trying to take the ball inside, attack the basket, and hopefully get a 2 plus 1. <laughs> <laughs> An end one opportunity. Mm -hmm. Paul Lee makes good with 2 free throws now. 6 points for Paul Lee. 6 quiet points at that. Castro, oh, Rafi Reyes with a good tap. Gets well, all the way for two points. One of the rare moments that you can steal a ball away from David Castro. But good pressure there from Raf Reyes. Castro. Gives it over to Mater Malaves. Malaves finds Rico Meyerhofer. Got it down low. BJ Walsh with the baby hook. It's good this time. Well, so far, BJ Walsh asserting his might. From the shade, at the shaded area. Oh, James Martinez! 18 points for him! Wow! Wow! 18 points, mostly from the three point area. And this time, six three pointers by by uh, James Martinez. BJ Walsh breathing some life into the LaSalle offense. But you know, James Martinez was able to hit that shot. But he was wide open. No cover from Mader Malabes, most desiccated defender. I think this is, since James Martinez did hitting that shot, even for the third time, this is the best yeah. time for the Green Archers to challenge James Martinez and extend their defense. We'd like to thank KFC and Smart for helping us with this exciting game at the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. I'm sure Coach Franz Pomaran is not happy with that uh, three-pointer by James Martinez. I'm sure Coach Franz Pomaran has sensed the urgency to extend their defense and each challenge James Martinez at the three-point area. The block time is inserted by Coach Vito Pomaran, a block by Casho off a summer shot. Malabit. Again, the sense of urgency to challenge the perimeter game of the UB Red Warriors. Barua is wide open for three, too short. It's time for Yui once again to get this basketball and score two more points. They'll lead by 249 to 47. James Martinez, he has been red hot for yeah. three point territory. Now, EJ Barua, a bigger defender for James Martinez. Martinez misses that shot. It would have been. It would have brought the house down to see James Martinez get those two points, or rather three points, once more. But they get a second shot at it. Yeah, now he has Mader Malabes to contend with such long arms to keep the sights off, to disturb the sights of James Martinez from the perimeter. Wow, thrown away by UE. Oh, what a nice defensive play by Tangada. Not bad for a guy who's off the bench and getting yeah. a steal. Not giving up on the play. They challenge once again, but Samo makes the pay two for the turnover. Coach Franz Pumaren has heard enough. This is UE's biggest lead. 52 to 47. We'll be right back. Inara Sports Arena in beautiful Pasig City, the exciting ball game between the UE Red Warriors and the De La Salle University Green Archers here at a 2008 Full Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championship. And the bang of the drums means that the game is about to get underway once more. UE climbing back from, from a deficit on their way to a 52-47 lead. Now you have a double whammy there for the Green Archers. The Green Archers now has now two problems at hand. One is to take away the inside game of the UE Red Warriors, courtesy of Elver Espiritu. Now you have to extend your defense to cover the shooters of the Red Warriors. Fire Hoffer has shot, missed. James Martinez, who has been scoring profusely here for Costindo Pumarin. Damar, he has been good offensively also. Elvis Espiritu. The 
shot hobbled by Meyer Hopper. Yes, Mike, you were saying. Yeah, this is actually a good scenario for the UE Red Warriors. Now that they have established their perimeter game, it's time for them to, to do some dribble drives and take oh! it to the basket. Meyer Hopper, Meyer Hopper yeah! scoring two important points, much needed points for the De La Salle Green Archers off a of P.J. Walsham pass. Good recognition by Walsham in the slam by Rico Meyer Hopper. Actually, he did that just to wake up the Green Archers. And you have to do that. Because right now the Green Archers are having a lot of trouble defending and also scoring. Substitution is about to happen for both squads. And Coach Franz Pumarin has his usual starting lineup already, except for uh, Bogating as Mangas goes into the ball game. Well, actually, Coach Franz Pumarin is now going for a much taller lineup with James Mangas playing the two and PJ Blue playing the wing. We'll give you now our Flying B slam dunk Rico Meyer Hopper of the P.J. Walsham recognition. Much needed two points for the Archers. That would actually wake up some emotion for the yes. Archers. And including Meyer Hopper who's not really having his uh, usual offensive night. And Rone throws up a prayer, doesn't go in. Iron Bagaching, point guard duties once more for him. The tap by Zamar. You know, Zamar and Rami Reyes have been doing an excellent job pressuring the point guards yeah. of DLSU or the pseudo point guards of the DLSU. pseudo point guards. Yeah, actually, Gino Etrone eager to prove himself out there on the floor. Made a mistake on um, putting the ball right in front of Rico Meyer yes. over there. So he <laughs> missed a second chance opportunity. You know what? I, you know what I'm looking forward to here in the lineup? It's Valapunia. Oh, yeah. It's been a revelation to the semi-pro league. Let's see if he has improved his game here in the collegiate uh, ranks. But we'll see that later on. That's Bagatik being out of the UE defense. They are successful in completing the steal. UE pushes the tempo now. Ball lead. Anytime they get a chance for a steal, off a break, definitely have to push the ball hard. Three point field goal, two out of 11 for the Archers. For UE, it's Martinez, six out of eight for three point territory. Yagas, the fall away is good. 54 49. And that was almost without time to spare. Yep. Effortless shot by Nani Yagas. Mangahas. They've been exchanging point guard duty to Nasal. It's actually they're do, actually they're doing it by committee right now. In the absence of LA Rivilla and Simon Atkins on the floor and in the lineup, they're actually doing it by committee. James Mangahas draining a three, 54 to 52 Lasal down down just by two points. Zamar slicing. Gets the ball back. His three-pointer. Lasal left him wide open. A dangerous move. Zamar gonna hit that shot. Mangahas. Bagating over to James Mangahas. Runs straight into uh, Targada. Yep. Or Tagarda. Mm -hmm. And that would, yes. Yeah, James Mangahas there stuffing his elbow out. And that uh, well, Tagarda offered some token resistance for an offensive foul. Timeout once again falls on the floor as we give you the same Mangas offensive foul. We'll be right back with more. The LaSalle bench and Psycho D Joshua Webb. Psycho D. Yes. The scouting report. Enlighten me, enlighten me. So from intention depends on batang ito, you know. First place, Mandaluyong, malapit lang. Sports management. That was our Tokyo Tokyo scouting report. Tokyo Tokyo Mipa. Back to the game between LaSalle and QE. Rafi Reyes. Did a good job doing point guard for UE earlier on. It's back for more directing duty for Coach Dito Pomare. Actually, that pressure defense employed by the Green Archers cut down their shot clock to like 15 seconds. James Martinez. Once the shot didn't go in. 
P.J. Barua gives it over to Mendoza who fumbles. And Mendoza, I don't think, was, was expecting that well, pass. P.J. Barua had the right idea, so he had that extra pass to Mark Mendoza. But Mark Mendoza wasn't ready yes. to receive the pass from uh, P.J. Further, further em emphasizing Coach Mraz Kumarin's uh, philosophy of readiness. And you can put Kulu Kulu to Opeza on defense. Paul Lee missing that shot dearly for UE. Barua all the way! Yes! Actually, from a transition defense by the Red Warriors there was absent. Six deadlock of the game at 54. Martinez over to Rafi Reyes. You know, we've seen well, third quarter turnovers on their screens. Eight for DLSU. A lot of numbers. Two only for UE. Make that three for UE. Points of turnovers, ten points for UE. Alam mo, Mike, Patagal na patagal itong larong ito eh. Nakikita mo talaga yung uh, identity of both of these two teams. Mm -hmm. Both teams almost play the same way defensively. Well, offense, uh, on offense, oh, oh. either one would like to take advantage of the other. Other efficiencies. Nico Meyer Hopper taking it all the way for the Kuala Lampe! And that to wake up some of the players inside the court of the Green Archers. Both sides actually. Yep. <laughs> Motion uh -oh. inside the court for DLSU. It's yes, and James Martinez and Rafi Reyes pass it over to Dean Dupumaren. Unfortunately, Dean Dupumaren has had his best playing days behind him. Yep. <laughs> and we, when we all thought, ma ang mga palinin ng tang ay nasa oh, ng bobo. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Awaiting the emotions of both of these two teams. Palabas to the handle. Getting a little physical. We're talking about Rafi Reyes and J.B. Gacho. Foul called by the referee. And against Reyes. It's the Now mean... Another team foul for UE. Only their second team foul. LaSalle is already in the penalty. Two-point lead by DLSU. Off that slam by Rico Meyerhofer. Bader Malabes loses it to James Martinez. Martinez gives it over to Reyes! Wasn't able to beat the clock. DLSU hangs on for dear life. 56 to 54. What, a, what an exciting third quarter this has been, Mike. Yep. So far, two slams by Rico Meyerhofer. As we give you the KFC assist delivery of the quarter, it will be Casho to PJ Barua. Their fast break opportunity made possible. That assist, KFC, it's, it's finger licking good when we come back. The exciting fourth quarter of this game, La Sala gets UE, the 2008 Philo Flying BPTC. <laughs> Flying V, Philippine Collegiate Championships. Emotions running high, and why not? We bring you our Flying V slam dunk, Rico Maya Hopper. Look at the hang time. <laughs> Definitely awaking a lot of emotions here inside the Inada Sports Arena. Me and Mike Abasolos included. In spite of Nani Yagas' extended arms yes. in that flame, Rico Maya Hopper was able to jump high enough to go for that slam, probably waking up some adrenaline into the Green Archers' uh, cost. Fourth quarter array here, Mariliagas, James Martinez, Rafi Reyes. Let's look at the quarter scores, Mike. Not, not a lot of the difference here in the third quarter. Most of the damage was done by Yui in the second. It almost did even in the third quarter. 56 to 54, Vasal is still in the lead. James Martinez. We were talking about the lineup. Toto Van Dying is also in the ballgame for Coach uh, for Coach Tito Comare. And so is Elmer Espini to competing their five here in the fourth quarter for Lasal. Rico Meyerhofer, Balabes. Uh, there's Casho, Pagatsing, and Ferdinand. Let's turn you over now to Rina Villamore for this court side update. Yes, in that last huddle, Coach Tito was so disappointed with his boys because they were so disoriented. For UE now, they wanted to dominate all bo on both ends of the court for this last quarter. They wanted to make all passing lanes of DLSU unavailable, so it will be harder for them to move here to the basket. Contest on all of the green archer shots. They have to push the ball even more and to attack 
on every opportunity. Lastly, it will be important for them to communicate to know where and to whom to pass the ball. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Rina, for that courtside update. We've seen a lot of action since. Ball going back to DLSU and Alamo. It all boils down to defense and what Coach Dito is trying to point out. Yep, and execution. Actually, in that play, the Red Warriors had the right idea of moving the ball well and getting the ball inside, but so far, it hasn't worked for them. Hiram Bagancheik once again taking over at point guard. He had a great game against San Carlos. But then Malabes, an air ball. Bagancheik had the right idea, saving it. The other guy's caught red-handed. Holding Ferdinand's jersey, preventing him from getting the ball. His third, His third already. And you know, with Pariliagas having three fouls, this means that if Coach Dino Pomarin decides to sit him down, this would mean more frontline moves. No, actually, this is the quarter that you don't hold back no more. Hey. Ah. Makes it a four-point lead, Day 37 remaining here. We'd like to thank KFC and Smart for helping us out here at the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Great game between between uh, UE and DLSU. Bandai, the shot is short. Castro with the rebound, fouled by Tagarda. Actually, Bandai pulled off the bench, taking a jump shot. Almost made it, but just hit the rim. Paul Lee in the throne, inserted by coach Dino Pomarin. Bandayang will sit down, and so will Elmer Espiritu. And I, think, and I also think that uh, Zamar will go into the ball game. by Bader Malabes. Nice teamwork by DLSU, but it's four minutes by James Pangahas. Well, actually, James Pangahas did in his shot there. James Martinez over to Damar. Paul Lee. Yugi still looking for him to score and use his offensive prowess in this game. Another steal by Bader Malabes. James Pangahas. He tried to go all the way. Damar prevented him from shooting that ball. So far, not a productive quarter yet for Gino Atrone, replacing the much tired the Elmer Espiritu. Well, Elmer Espiritu only had a few seconds to relax on the bench. He's inserted back into the ball game by Coach Gino Tomarin to handle the front court for UE. But oh, is also inserted into the ball game. So far, this is the strongest lineup that the UE Royal Warriors have right now in its roster. Mangahas, yes, we were saying my uh, So far, Elmer is going to and Nadia has to play the front line and what a small backcourt in Lee, Zamar and James Martinez. But Zamar and Martinez, we have to understand that they are both excellent shooters and they have burned the Green Archers then in the, during the third quarter. Mangahas makes free throws. Timeout called by Coach Dito Pomar and we'll be right back. LaSalle fans enjoying this game. UE fans hoping to pull an upset here. 60 to 54 DLSU in the lead, 727 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 2008 Philo Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships at the Inares Sports Arena in Pasig. What's, yeah, what's surprising here is JB Kashi and Rico Meyerhofer are sitting on the bench doing a yeoman's job for the Green Archers right now. Mariliagas, good teamwork from UE. They're pressuring once again. Well, they were successful when they were doing the press, Mike. So now they go back into pressuring the guards of DLSU. Okay, so far, the UE Red Warriors have no, have 
nothing to hold back right now. Definitely, in the last six minutes, they will press all the way. James Banga has the three. Was that good? Tagata. The defense is quickly setting up. One lead. Not finding the defense. Goes oh. straight for the pass and scores two points. Everybody forgot about Paul D there when he was on top and he had a straight line towards the basket. Oh, we know what's going to happen next! Bam, baby! Elmer Espiritu ties the ball game once again, our seventh deadlock of the ball game. 60 all. Timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. back flying v slam dunk elmer espiritu wow look at that stuffing it straight on that fast break and we were just talking oh, about the pressure, the pressure defense of the ue red warriors in the last six minutes and now elmer espiritu tried to play the passing lanes oh. there and was able to get the steal for another emotional slam dunk we're talking, for his team. Oh, talking about emotions running high sabi ni Elmer Spirito bakala nyo kayo lang kami rin may slam dunk din yata kami oh. I'm not a slam dunk champion for nothing this year yeah. all star Elmer Spirito bringing life into this team as if we need, as if we need any more <laughs> James Bangahas knocked there by uh, I think it was by Zamar that will be the ball. We'll go back to the LSU. Oh, no, it was Tagata. So look look at how, take the yeah. ball once more. And look at how Paul Lee and uh, Lucas Tagarda sprint back when James Manga yes. has got the ball. Steal situation here in the game. Seven steals by UE, five by the LSU. That's the reason why they're here. And in, our in yes. starters, UE scoring 43. The LSU, well, they're 20 plus. And now JB Casho is now in the ball game to give some stability in the uh, Green Archers backcourt. He's, uh, you know, ironically, he is the team's best hope at point guard here today. Yep, and their supreme leader. But that will definitely compromise his scoring. I mean, JB Casho is a great guy. Uh, he has the presence of mind, can play a plethora of positions, kahit ang small forward, kung kailangan mo na mabilis, kaya niyan. Yep. Oh, uh, any combo guard will have to sacrifice one way or the other, either defense, his defense or his offense. Oh, JV Casho! Well, at that time, we were actually <laughs> talking about, talking about just uh, sacrificing each one, oh. but he triggered his offensive mindedness there. Kung saan niya hinugod yung tira niyo, di natin alam. James Martinez, oh! Wow, we are treated, being treated into a quality ball game by these two teams. James Martinez just a, hitting just a, a big few, one. Yeah, just a few minutes after his last shot, he is still hot from the three-point area. Elmer Espiritu anticipating the pass once again. Paul Lee, would he go all the way? No. Martinez sets the ball for UE. Elmer Espiritu now. They're looking for Martinez. They find him. More league and also shoot from three-point brain. Elmer Espiritu fakes. And it would be a pushing foul against PJ Walsh. Actually, that was a, a, a good matchup for Elmer, uh, Elmer Espiritu against uh, PJ Walsh. KFC delivery assist of the quarter. James Martinez, a recipient of that uh, great pass. KFC, it's finger looking good. 8878888. Paul Lee fouled by JB Casho. He's there telling the referees, Kun sa baba. Called him before he took the shot. Yeah, JB Casho not using his uh, feet there to play defense, uh, overreached, uh, overreached towards the arm of Elmer Martinez for the foul. Yes, he hit big ones a while ago. Not good this time. JP Casio. Still the main yes. point guard position for the Green Archers. On your screen, three point field goals. Well, it has become a little some more sour for UE, but still even more sour for DLSU. Mangahan. Misses once more. 
Meyerhofer tried to save that uh, that shot by mga has hindi nga lang niya nakuha yung bola but so, yes so far the green archers are settling for jump shots yes and from out the out from outside the perimeter not really taking it strong to the inside JV Cash using his experience and if we know JV Cash well it's gonna make sure the two points go in again the defensive intensity of the green archers prevailing over the offensive uh, sets of the, of the Red Warriors. 64-63, 3.58 remaining. LaSalle in the lead, but Paul Lee wanted it to go back the UE way. Meyer Hopper with a hard foul. And I think that's the only way you can stop <laughs> Elmer Espiritu from scoring when he's high up there already. Double-double na po itong si Elmer Espiritu. 10 points, 10 rebounds. And with these two free throws, it could be either 11 and 12, uh, 11 and 10, or 12 and 10. Well, so far this is a one, one win or go home yes. tournament. So everything's at stake here. Just saw his stats on their screens. We were talking about guys from uh, both of these teams able to fill up the stat sheet. Elmer Espiritu, his second free throw, tied at 64. Gives the lead back to UE. BJ Walsh up in place of James Mahas. Hello, Mike. This is uh, this is crunch time for both of these two teams. Yep. And well, yes, this is actually the a quick backcourt trio for the Red Warriors, putting in James Martinez, Zamar, and Rafi Reyes. To pressure the yeah. ball all the way against the Green Archers. Magaching and Kaso are there. But he almost loses it. They run out of time. 24 second shot clock violation. Coach Prasumar is not happy with the events. Well, that was, that was good recognition by the UE Red Warriors. As soon as Hiram Bagatsing gets the ball, they try to double team him. Recognizing the fact that Hiram Bagatsing is not a legitimate point guard for DLSU. Well, not really the starting point yes. guard for the DLSU Green Archers. Good uh, hustle by Hiram Bagatsing. Martinez threw a lazy pass. Paul Lee still wanting to prove his scoring worth here in this game, but Martinez has been. The reason why they are up 65 64 has burnt the net for three pointers. But actually, Paul Lee is their best dribble penetrator on the floor right now. Yeah, guys, finds the open, decides to take the shot. Then go in, Meyer Hopper was there for the rebound. Casso running, taking it all the way, fouled by Paul Lee. And Casso is down. He comes back up right away. Elmer is to helping him and also the rest of uh, the DLSU squad. Nagumintang ng konti yung si JV Casio dun. Yep, that was a scary fall yes. by JV Casio. And all the green and white fans just drew one single breath as, the, as their best player <laughs> collapsed on the floor. JV Casio. You know, it's been a silent night for JV Casio. As he makes good with his free throws. It Very quiet, quiet yes. but efficient night yes. so far for JV Casio. He does the little things oh. so far for the Green Archers. Alamo JV Casio, he won't he may not score in the first three quarters. Pero pagating ng first quarter, throw away the statue. It's his time. Yep. He's gonna take over somehow, somewhere in the game. Tagara the back and for Rafi Reyes. 66 65 DLSU. Bagatin ran into Tagarga. And it will call for a foul penalty for both teams. Well, actually, Hiram Bagatin there should have uh, overreached there. He should have just planted his foot and then actually applied some pressure on the ball carrier of uh, the Red Warriors. Palitan muli ng tao. Tagarga is zero out of two from the free throw line. So, well... Well, you, we rarely see him mm -hmm. on the free throw line. 
Yeah, so this is his uh, opportunity to shine. Yung nga lang eh. I guess he will be zero out of three. But actually, at this uh, 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 closing juncture of the of the ball game, you have to make your free throws. This is the time when uh, all of those hours of practicing free throws <laughs> at the gym would pay off. Yeah, you so you have to sometimes uh, make your opponent pay for fouling you. <laughs> Tagarda. Still nothing on the free throw line. Jamie Casho is there. Casho running the running uh, the offense. Meyer Hopper finds Walsh up against the Casho and they set it calmly. Mangahas pulls the trigger. Short. He gets his own miss. Pass to Hiram Bagachin. Quick three. No. Mangahas was there. Oh. And this will be goal pending against the UE Red Warriors. Actually, the, this is one of the keys if the Green Archers would like to win this ball game is to control the boards and assert themselves from underneath. Zamar inserted by coach Dindo Pumarin. Let's look at this replay. Manga has not giving up. Espiritu, well, to credit Espiritu, you know, he will not give Manga the satisfaction of letting him see his shot go in. Mm -hmm. But still counted nonetheless. Three point lead with 223 remaining here in the game. Elmer Espiritu over to Zamar, who's back in the game for defensive duty. It is hard actually to pressure the Red Warriors right now when you have three backcourt people on the floor playing for you. Martinez over to Paul Lee. They're looking for their shot, but good pressure. And they run, run out of time. 24 seconds shot clock violation. Good defense by Coach Pumaren's boys. Actually, the Green Archers are ex actually extending, trying to double team the elbow. I got at the back of the game for defensive purposes again. And PJ Barua will also be inserted by Coach Franz Pumare. And I guess this is because of uh, offensive, well, because of his offensive prowess. It comes to PJ Barua. And will be Casso taking over at point guard. So far, Lucas Tagarda has been tasked to hound JV Casso at the dying minutes of the ball game. Bill Oil last two minutes of the game. Casso pulls the trigger. No. Rebound by Manga has again and he puts it back. It's now a five point ball game. Dito Kumare will call a time out. We see James Mangahas, relentless on the boards. We'll be right back. the Inara Sports Arena the final 1 minute and 46 seconds of this game between the De La Salle University Green Archers of Coach Franz Pumaren and Coach Dindo Pumaren's University of the East Red Warriors La Salle leads at 70 to 65 but don't count UE out Mike it's still still a long way to go what a family day we are having here right now no Mips you know uh, talking about family day Mike I'm sure James Mangahas would like to win today because he's thinking, I guess he's thinking about his brother who lost the opportunity to go to the next round. Well, if ever, well, if ever they win this game, I'd like to sit on that locker room and then say, hey, hey James, uh, can I go to the <laughs> right now? <laughs> Martinez, he has been hot for UE. He's in the ball game in the dying minutes of this uh, exciting matchup. Mangahas is on him, a bigger Mangahas. Parilagas against a bigger PJ Walsh of the hook is not good. Oh, Paul Lee was but pushing. Or rather, uh, JB Casho. Was it JB Casho? No. Yes, it was. JB Casho caught pushing Paul Lee. Well, Coach Franz Fumarin recognizing the hot hand of James Martinez, putting in James Mangahas on him at this uh, point of the ball game. It was Malabes who was called for the foul, third on him. Penalty situation, ball on the line, a chance to. Trim this lead to three or two, or at four or three. Still a long way to go. Um, once Paul Lee converts on these uh, two free throws, they'll be left with three. All they need to do is hold their ground on defense. And that's it. Paul Lee making his first. Five out of seven from the free throw line of Paul Lee. Now, UE. After get uh, if Paulie makes this one, 
that would give them a three-point lead. Do they press or do they wait for the South half? With the formation now of the UEFA Warriors, definitely they will press. Because everybody is at the front court. Bogatzi and Cernan. And we're playing Spader Malabes to make up his third foul. Meyer Hoffer. Almost traveled. Mala is having problems. He has to throw this one up. Meyer Hoffer is open. Oh, don't look fast. P.J. Walsh. Uh, no! P.J. Walsh is sorry missed, but a good pass by Rico Meyer Hoffer. Martinez. Espiritu decides to take a three. Yes! Oh, what a shot! Tying the ball at 70. The double-double now of the double-double performer now in Elmer Espiritu making that three is a big thing for the U.S. Red Water side now. Oh, and he gets a defensive play on the other end. Bogatin gives it over to Meyer Hopper. Good block. Ten seconds left the shot block. U.E. is pushing the tempo on defense. Bolli is back in the game for Tagarda for defensive purposes. What they lack on size. They, make up, they for, make up for their quickness and speed. And tenacity. Look at that block by Tagarda. Great effort there by Lucas Tagarda. JV Casho. The running floor is not good. Meyerhofer fighting for the board. A foul call against James Martinez. Reaching in from underneath. Yes. On Rico Meyerhofer. But that's only his first personal foul. This will mean two free throws for Rico Meyerhofer. He's been missing his free throws left and right. This free throw, two out of four, 50% from the line. It will see Rico Meyerhofer. Well, we've seen Rico Meyerhofer miss in the past. So, they, they would need to box out if you're LaSalle. If you're UE, you have to get this possession. Or, if you need to foul someone, if he misses, misses this free throw, it will be Rico Meyerhofer. At a Rico time for yep. UE. But... <laughs> oh yeah, he does have a loudspeaker inserted in his ears. <laughs> Rico Meyerhofer gives LaSalle a slim one-point lead. Make that two when it matters the most. Rico Meyerhofer got the free throws in, but Der Malabes in once more into the ball game. Now what does Yuki have to do in this offensive set, Mike? Well, actually now they have Molly in the lineup. And Elmer Espirito, they have to take the ball inside right now. They can't settle for jump shots. Martinez, they go to Espirito. As predicted, Espirito working against Rico Meyerhofer. The fake, the fadeaway is too strong. And Walsham clears the boards. Great defense there by Rico Meyerhofer. Standing his ground against the long arm Elmer Espirito. And Rico Meyerhofer in front of us pumping his chest. Showing his defensive prowess. Casho now, if you're UE, you don't want to foul this guy. Yep. He's 2 out of 2, 100% from the free, uh, free throw line. And you know, JB Casho, you don't have to even look at the numbers to know that he's a dangerous free throw shooter. Yep. You, 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 if you're looking for any expression on JB Casho's face, you won't get any. This guy is ice cold. You know, I love that location. But a poker face is not You know, you don't know what he's thinking. He's what I call ice. Yes. <laughs> really a hearted competitor. 26.4 seconds left on the game clock. 72 to 70. DLSU hanging on for to dear life. UE wanting to get one over the archers. Makes it a three-point lead. Mike with, the, with three points. Uh, with a three-point deficit. If you're UE, do you take a quick three with James Martinez no, and no. The, the rest of the guys there? All they need to do is get a quick two from here. It's for defense. On defense, do you foul or do you go for the steal first? Go for the steal first. Let's see how uh, the Red Warriors will approach this one. They badly need to score any which way possible. James Martinez against Mangahas. Hold on the break. Zapar was there. Rafi Reyes has hit bigger shots. This is that one. Barrels with the boards. Zamar again. Zigzagging. Tried to go all the way. Yeah! Now they have to foul here to stop the clock. And they foul the most dangerous shooter on the board, J.B. Casho. But then again, J.B. Casho this one earlier. Well, let's hope that... Let, uh, hope that the... That J.B. Casho would miss those two free throws. And hopefully, get some overtime. 
<laughs> Magdidilang anghel kaya po. Si, uh, Or, you're gonna kill me if I say that. <laughs> 73 to 72, Lasal holding on to a one point uh, lead. Casho wanted to make it back to a three point lead. Three out of four, JB Casho on the line. 7.5 seconds remaining on an exciting ball game. Casho makes it a more comfortable breathing room, much to the delight of the green and white. Rico Meyer Hopper. A lot of uh, experience under his belt. JV Casio, Bader Malabes, James Mangahan, Hiram Bagatig, Yagas Martinez, who's bringing down the ball, Samar Espirito, and Fonley for UE. They fumble it. Two pointer. Oh, and that is it. DLSU moves on to the final four of the 2000 NA Philippine Collegiate Championship by Flying Speed and Phil Oil. It will be a long discussion on the dinner table, Mike. Yep. <laughs> long discussion on the dinner table. Again, uh, both teams really played great. Both teams uh, played excellent defense. It was just really breaks of the game. All and really, who had the best effort will win this game. Well, you have to applaud both of the efforts of these two teams fighting against their handicaps, not compromising anything. Mm -hmm. Well, they had to give up a few, uh, a few positions and a few, uh, a few disadvantages. But in the end, both of them played a great game. Alam mo, uh, Mike, for Lasal, they move on to the next round. For UE, it's going home time. What do you think? Will uh, Coach Dindo Pumarin tell his boys? Well, they shouldn't be ashamed of playing against a strong team like De La Salle. They had a really good run. They had a good run at the zonals. Uh, they had a good run in some of the games, especially against uh, mm -hmm. UV. So they have actually have nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Dindo Pumarin has a great system. Uh, actually, I have to compliment the players for their effort. So, it's been a great run for the UE Red Warriors. Sino kaya ang ating best player? Well, Rina Villamor is with him right now. Yes, I am with Rico Meyerhofer who had 12 points and 11 rebounds in that game. Rico, you encountered so many difficulties. What are the difficulties you encountered in that game and what are the strategies you used to handle those problems? Um, well, this game very difficult because yun, yun nga, di ba? Same system. Coach Dindos, brother ni Coach Franz. So, yun, yung preparation namin medyo kulang pa kasi some of us playing in the PBL, some of us going to vacation. Then, Yun nga, uh, medyo nahirapan kami mabuos as a team for practices. So, yun, yun yung pinaka-difficulty na pwede mangyari sa amin, na hindi kami bansi sa tisa, nalalabang kami sa malalakas na team sa Final Four. Alright, you're now moving in the Elite Eight. How will you prepare for it? Um, siguro, yun, more, more sacrifice na lang. Um, we talk to our PBL team na, na baka pwede mag-focus kami kahit, kahit so ng konti lang sa, sa Lasal kasi alma mater namin. So, yun. All right, thank you so much and congratulations to the entire DLSU team. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Rina. As you just saw a couple of slams by Rico Meyer Hoffer, 12 points, 11 rebounds, burning the statue once more, right? Well, that's what you call veteranship for the old Rico Meyer Hoffer. The team's heart and soul. Mm -hmm. Definitely Rico for, yeah, for season 72, he will definitely be the focal point of the Green Archers. Now let's look at our updated bracket standings dito sa ating uh, Philippine Collegiate Championships. With the win, Lasal will move over to the final four, awaiting the winner between San Beda and Arellano University. Ateneo, na ona na rin kanina po, defeating Mapua. And uh, they, uh, they await the winner of the FEU Letran game. Wow, this proves to be a good one. You know, itong uh, na napipintong matchup between those uh, left in the Elite Eight. Mm -hmm. The pretenders are gone, so the heat is on. Definitely, as the series goes on. It's going to be one hell of a tournament. Well, our uh, next games, mga kaibigan, ano, you will have, uh, well, uh, marami pa po tayong laban dito sa ating Elite 8. It will be San Beda, you know, or San Beda going up against uh, Arellano University on December 3 sa San Juan Arena po, mangyayari yan. And uh, of course, the other game, Letran Knights going up against the FEU Tamaraus. 
second game, December 3, once again, the arena in San Juan. You know what, Mike, it's always a delight calling the game with you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much once again. Para po sa akin partner, si Mike Abasolo. And the Rina Villamor at courtside, this has been Miguel Torres. It's another brand of great basketball. Hope you keep on watching the Philippine Collegiate Championships.